the professor emeritus from U Cal Berkeley, from Cal Berkeley, joining me here now on the Rich Eisen Show once again, Dr. Harry Edwards. Thanks for calling in, Doctor. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. So let's talk a little bit about that exchange. So you did you visit USC to speak to OJ? Get him on the phone. What was that exchange about? Uh, no, I just uh, I was at I went down to uh, Southern California. I talked to both uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Mike Warren, Lucius Allen, a number of other UCLA players, as well as uh, going over to USC and uh, talking to OJ. I had known OJ since um, San Jose State tried to recruit him uh, coming out of uh, San Francisco City College, so it wasn't like uh, we didn't know each other. Uh, but fundamentally, what um, I was trying to do is to get uh, athletes to understand that we had to uh, make some changes. It wasn't enough simply to uh, struggle for access the way that um, uh, Jackie Robinson had, the way that uh, Kenny Washington and Woody Strode and Bill Willis and Marion Motley had uh, the, 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 you know, the way that the uh, players from the 1940s and 50s had struggled. It was time to move on to uh, the issue of dignity and respect, and Muhammad Ali had set the mold, had set the model for that, uh, that uh, we wanted to be respected as, uh, as uh, human beings, as citizens, and not just as great athletes on the field. So how did you take O.J.'s response of, I'm not black, I'm O.J.? How did you re receive that? Well, at first, uh, you know, I knew what O.J. was about. Uh, no one, O.J. wasn't a mystery to anybody in the African-American community. Uh, by the time he became um, institutionalized at USC, and uh, we understood that uh, that was where he was coming from. And in the end, what I wound up doing is uh, saying, well, look, uh, O.J., at least don't come out against us. Let us get this done. Um, he eventually did come out and say, hey, you know, I don't know what uh, Harry and uh, those guys were trying to do, uh, but in in any event, it had absolutely nothing to do with me. Um, O.J. completely succumbed to um, the uh, mainstream American demand uh, that uh, uh, you be shoehorned into some model and expectation of uh, what they wanted uh, a black athlete to be in order for them to feel comfortable to the extent uh, that he essentially erased all racial identity. He bent his soul uh, in order to uh, gain uh, whatever it was that mainstream America was uh, w was offering, and of course, all things come to an end. And as those things began to uh, erode, those things he had paid such a dear price for began to erode. To leave him to move uh, move away, he uh, I think he panicked. Now, what if he did take part in the civil rights movement, Dr. Edwards? How do you think that might have contributed? Well, I think it would have contributed tremendously. I mean, you go back and you look at the athletes uh, who did take part. I mean, Kurt Flood was not uh, Jackie Robinson. Uh, Smith and Carlos was not Jesse, were not Jesse Owens. Uh, Arthur Ashe was not Althea Gibson. Uh, Bill Russell wasn't the Harlem Globetrotters, or Earl Lloyd, or um, uh, Chuck Cooper. And Jim Brown was not uh, uh, Marion Motley, or um, Kenny Washington. Those athletes made tremendous contributions uh, based on that model set uh, by Muhammad Ali, who insisted on being accepted um, as he was uh, within the context of the struggle that he had to fight. Ali legitimized um, the whole struggle uh, of the black athlete in the uh, last uh, uh, four decades of the, of the 20th century. Um, he, made it, he made it very, very clear uh, that when you know, the Constitution said we the people uh, in order to form a more perfect union, it didn't say except for athletes. Uh, you guys just play and go home. Uh, so um, I, I think O.J., given his stature at that time, would have made a seminal difference. And, and had he gone in that direction, uh, I don't think he'd be in the situation that he's in today. Why do you say that? Well, because I think a great deal of what happened to O.J. was that he, uh, after his playing days were, were over, after he was still affiliated with these various companies, but like so many of those endorsements and so forth, uh, the real um, the situation that you're left with is the money and not so much the notoriety, the ownership of Honey Baked Hams, but not so much the notoriety of being O.J., who uh, is a front man for Honey Baked Hams and so forth. Uh, and as that begins to a road, uh, you're not left uh, with very much. Uh, you know, sports is a very interesting thing, particularly in American society. It's so much like life, which is why you've never seen <clears throat> um, uh, Brink's truck following a hearse to the cemetery. The only thing follows you to the cemetery is respect. The only thing that you really leave 
uh, these games with uh, that endures is respect. That's why you saw uh, what you did uh, uh, with regard to Muhammad Ali's funeral and uh, memorial service. That was a tremendous outpouring of love and respect. Uh, that's the only thing you leave these games with. And once that's gone and you have traded everything away in order to be O.J., to be uh, that non-racial, non-relevant uh, entity, uh, because that's what white mainstream America felt comfortable with at the time. And then it begins to erode, and all things erode. Uh, you're left with nothing. And I think that O.J. panicked. Dr. Harry Edwards joining me here on The Rich Eisen Show. Did O.J. think that by him... Uh, succeeding on the field and then blending into, as you would say, and as you have been putting it, white America, and also coming across to white America as colorless, do you think he was, in his mind, making a contribution to the movement in that no. regard? No. I don't think O.J. cared about anybody but O.J. I think that that was the case then, and I think it's the case now. Uh, there are some things that, um, uh, once you decide that you are not going to be relevant to something as central and key as that struggle in the 1960s where people were literally giving up their lives, their careers, and so forth in order to try to create that more perfect union, uh, you uh, can't all of a sudden say, and I made a contribution by just being O.J. Uh, that's not, that is absolutely not the case, and anybody who believes that is deluding themselves. O.J. cared about O.J., and he made that very, very clear. Uh, I'm, I'm O.J. I am uh, exactly what I have worked so hard to um, uh, uh, craft and structure. Uh, but the thing that happens, of course, is that in the end, all of those things that you uh, paid such a high price for begin to erode. And then what are you left with? What do you have? The respect is gone. The acknowledgement is gone. The cheers, the applause, it's all gone. And as you begin to see that slip away, whether it's uh, family, whether it's uh, recognition, whether it's uh, applause, um, it, where do you turn? What, what do you point to to say, and this was what uh, my contribution was? Your success occupationally is what you achieve. Your significance your contribution to the broader struggle is what you leave. What O.J. had to leave was nothing. Did you take no for an answer at the time, or did, uh, was there any arm twisting that, say, Muhammad Ali get involved to try and dial up O.J. to say, how, you know, what do you think no, about I, joining I, us? I, I didn't do any arm twisting, but I know that he had conversations with Jim Brown, and he told Jim Brown uh, straight up, you uh, have taken these stands, you have done uh, all of these things on behalf of the movement, and look at you. Look at what I've done and the way that I've done it, and look at me. Which one of us is better off? I mean, uh, he, he literally uh, put that in, um, in Jim's face. And, uh, I mean, Jim made it very, very clear that uh, that's too high a price to pay. Your soul, uh, your manhood, your integrity. Uh, one of the things that Muhammad Ali did um, uh, was to make it very, very clear that uh, there are some things uh, that you can't put a price on. Principle, personal integrity, freedom, and so forth. You can't put a price on that. And people say, well, back in that day, they weren't making as much money as they're making now and so forth. Anytime you're putting everything on the line, the amount doesn't matter. The number of zeros don't matter. You're putting everything on the line, and in, in the case of these athletes, including their lives. These were some very dangerous uh, and explosive times. So uh, there were people who approached O.J., but he was consistent. I have to give him that. He was consistent. The other thing that uh, he compelled me uh, to wrestle with is what are we really struggling for? Are we struggling for a situation where white racism uh, is uh, dispensed with only to be replaced by black orthodoxy? Are we saying that unless you behave in this way, you are not legitimate? And in the end, what I wound up saying to O.J. is, look, at least 
don't come out against this. You can be whatever you want to be. If you want to be that, that's fine. Uh, that's your prerogative. But don't come out against us. Uh, and um, uh, that was where that was where I left it. Well, in terms of consistency, though, Doctor Edwards, I don't, how do I put this? Because uh, we're going to see this in episode three tonight. Um, that when his life was on the line on trial, he, in many ways, in many eyes, used, if you will, the plight of the African American in the Los Angeles community with the police department, which was a true plight. He used that to try and get himself off. And I'm wondering, well, I'm I, wondering, I'm wondering how that sat oh, with you. Oh, he was still consistent. He just sat there. But what, what, uh, what happened with the trial and black response to it was? It had, th their response didn't have anything to do with O.J. It had to do with the justice system that had left, let people off who had murdered black people, let cops off who had murdered black people, um, refused to investigate case after case where black women came up missing, I mean, by the score. And it wasn't investigated because black people didn't matter. It, they didn't put eight or nine or ten uh, detectives on uh, uh, missing black women in Los Angeles. And so uh, black people were uh, responding to that situation. O.J. was simply a vehicle that allowed them to express that. And when he uh, got out, out from under that double murder charge, a lot of black people cheered and said, well, this is one that we uh, may have gotten wrong this time, but at least it was one that swung the other way. It wasn't a situation where somebody killing uh, a black person uh, walked, whether it be a Korean grocer mm -hmm. or whether it be a cop or whether it just be somebody uh, involved in a, a, a contentious situation. So uh, that situation had nothing to do with O.J. I mean, it, 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 it had to do with that whole history of injustice and, and so forth that black people, not just in Los Angeles, but across this country had experienced. And that's why you got the reaction that you did. So I guess in, to, to wrap it up then, just knowing what you talked about, how O.J. was unwilling, un, un, um, uninterested in being part of the movement in the late 60s, do you view the fact that he wound up being such a vehicle here in Los Angeles ironic, disgusting? How do you view that? Well, um, you, you know, I think that you reap what you sow. If you uh, so demean and so erode the integrity of the justice system that you have people murdered uh, and the justice system does not respond even handedly, it's only a matter of time before that pendulum swings the other way. So O.J. was just the vehicle mm. by which that occurred. His uh, relevance within the African-American community beyond that uh, is zero. He was by which that um, uh, came to be expressed. And it said more about us as a society and where we could be headed as a nation than it said about uh, Orenthal James Simpson. Dr. Edwards, love having you on. I truly enjoy our conversations every single time we have them. Thank you for taking the time today. Thank you very much for having me. Of course, that's Dr. Harry Edwards. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.